Hi, I'm Thor, and I'm developing a game set aboard a giant vehicle in a frozen wasteland where you have to fight for your survival. And after this devlog there will be more things to fight as I'm adding humanoid enemies with intelligent pathfinding. Additionally, big news, I finally have a Steam page for my game. So if you're interested in the game it would be greatly appreciated if you wishlisted it. One major issue with implementing NPCs and AI into your game is that you need them to move around because otherwise the world is going to be boring and lifeless. Therefore I need my humanoid and potentially also bug enemies to be able to run around on the map. However just moving them directly towards a target position is pretty bad because they go through walls and objects and show zero signs of intelligence. Because of this, I need to implement some sort of pathfinding into my game, where being able to buy an asset would be very nice, but unfortunately I'm using Unity Dots and there aren't as many assets in the Unity Asset Store as there is for normal Unity. Additionally, I have a procedural world in my game with a lot of moving parts and obstacles. What this means is that I have to do a lot of work myself. But everybody knows that A-Star Pathfinding is a classic for pathfinding in games. However, A-Star usually works with a grid or voxel world, 2D or 3D. Unfortunately, my game isn't based on a grid or voxels. So in order to be able to pathfind, we need to generate a voxel representation. So I started off with creating this voxel representation by using a hash map with the voxel position XYZ as the key and whether or not the position is occupied as the value. Which means that we can very quickly query whether or not a position is blocked either by a wall, a resource or some other obstacle. I started out by just brute forcing this voxelization process by splitting the world into voxel positions and doing a raycast filling each voxel vertically. This was very bad for performance however, where when we only do a voxelization for 100 meters around the player, we end up doing 1 million raycasts every single frame, which is not that efficient. Additionally, using a hash map to map each voxel position against a bool representing whether or not it's occupied is also bad for performance and memory usage. Therefore, I started optimizing. Instead of saving all voxels, we only save occupied voxels, where we can just assume that voxels not existing in the hash map aren't occupied. This also means that if we only store hits, we don't need a hash map, as the value for any key is always true, representing an occupied voxel. Therefore, I changed the hash map into a hash set, so that we only save the occupied positions and can very quickly see if a voxel is occupied by checking if the hash set contains the position. I'm using an integer position as the key, which means that the world can only be split up into whole unit cubes, where the smallest size is one cubic meter for the voxels, just like Minecraft. If I want to have smaller sizes, I need to use floats to be able to save decimal positions. However, I did a small benchmark using a voxelization distance of 41 meters, where going from integers to floats increased the time taken to voxelize the world from 1 millisecond to 17.5 milliseconds. And for reference, 16.6 milliseconds is equivalent to 60 FPS. However, using halves, which also supported decimals but at a lower precision and range, brought the milliseconds from 17.5 milliseconds down to just 5. This is however still 5 times as bad as using integers, and therefore for the moment I'm still using integers as I don't know if the increased voxel resolution is needed. I might however be able to do some trickery in order to get a decimal point by just multiplying and dividing the position in order to convert it to and from integers and floats. For example, we can just multiply every position with 10 in order to be able to represent positions with one decimal as an integer. For example, Having a voxel size of 0.5 would give us twice the voxel resolution while still using integers, where each voxel step increases the integer value by 5. And since the max value of an integer is a bit more than 2 billion, we can still save voxel positions up to 200 million meters away from the world origin, which should hopefully be enough for my game. 
For reference, the moon is roughly 380 million meters away from the Earth. However, brute forcing the voxelization isn't enough, as the performance for such a small radius is way too bad, as the game is basically unplayable. So if we don't want to voxelize the entire world, inside the voxelization distance every frame, we need a history of the voxel world. Therefore we do a temporal voxelization instead, where we have a hash set containing all hits that is saved across frames. This voxelization saves all hits and completely ignores voxels that aren't occupied, except for dynamically moving objects which require a specific voxelization pass for any collider moving during runtime identified with a tag, where we save another set of all the dynamic hits and add that to the global set, before removing the dynamic hits the next frame, calculating the new dynamic hits and repeating. Which means that we can update the voxels previously occupied by dynamically moving objects that have left those voxels, such as the vehicle moving. But still doing one raycast per voxel is very bad for performance. Therefore, instead of having a voxelization volume, we have a voxelization area. A flat area centered on the player's height, where we do long raycasts above and below this area, saving the position of each hit into the hash set, giving us a voxelized collision shell of the world. However, it is still not good enough, as the performance scales very poorly with an increase of the voxelization area. Where only voxelizing up to a distance of 1000 meters gives us the same 1 million raycasts. Therefore, I had to go for a smarter solution than brute forcing it with raycasts. Instead of using raycasts to get a shell of colliders, we can get every collider's axis aligned bounding box, AABB, and convert it into an oriented bounding box, OBB, and then voxelize this OBB to get all hits inside of colliders. This is however more demanding than using an AABB, but it is necessary in order to have a somewhat accurate voxel representation. However, using these OBBs to voxelize the world is both faster and more accurate than using raycasts, as we now get a voxelized collision volume of the world, meaning that we now get the size of colliders as well, instead of just the top and bottom. Additionally, we also know where OBBs are, so we don't waste performance of voxelizing empty space. In Unity ECS, there's an option to use a change filter, which filters out any entities that have had a change in the specified component. Therefore, we apply a change filter to the transform component, and therefore never revoxelize any colliders that haven't had their positions changed giving us a major increase in performance. Additionally, we do a similar pass for all terrain pieces, but since they occupy a very large volume, we can't use the same OBB voxelization process as there are some pretty major lag spikes. Therefore, once the terrain piece spawns in, we perform raycasts over the top of it to get a voxelized terrain shape, which is done once the terrain piece loads in and never again. This works since the terrain meshes are basically two-dimensional and don't have any sides to collide with, but if I add caves to the game, it might require a rethink. After this voxel representation has been generated and optimized, we can begin on implementing a three-dimensional A-star algorithm, which is actually not that difficult to implement as the implementation is for the most part the same as two-dimensional A star, but with more neighbors and more costs, where the cost is how expensive it is for the algorithm to take a single step. Going diagonally is cheaper than going forward and then to the side. I won't go into the details of the A star pathfinding in terms of implementation, as there is already a lot of information about it, but I will explain the specific design decisions and optimizations I did for my implementation. However, as an overview, A star works by exploring the neighbors of a cell, calculating the cost of the path we took to the neighbor, as well as the best case cost for getting to the goal, where the algorithm prioritizes exploring the neighbors with the lowest goal cost, as they are most likely the correct path to the goal excluding any potential walls or other obstacles hindering this direct path. 
where the function used to get the cost for the best case path to the goal is known as a heuristic. It is generally a good idea to have a correct estimate or a lower estimate than the actual path found, known as a underestimating heuristic. It underestimates the distance to the target. But in some cases an overestimating heuristic can be better for finding a path to the target faster, albeit not the optimal path, which is perfectly fine for my needs as finding a path is good enough. Additionally, it also makes the enemies seem a bit more intelligent since they care more about getting to the target instead of being perfect. Finding the best cell for each iteration in the A-star algorithm is slow as we have to sort the entire set of unsearched cells, which for large distances can be a very demanding task as we have a lot of cells to search. Using a smarter collection type that allows for faster searches such as a binary tree, where the cheapest cell is always at the first position, would be a lot faster, but every newly inserted unsearched cell would have to partially resort the tree. This is faster than linearly iterating over an array if you have a low branching factor, i.e. the number of new cells found per iteration. But for my case, I have a branching factor of 26 in the worst case, as there are 26 possible directions the Pathfinder can go in in every iteration. I can, however, easily get this down to 24 by not allowing the Pathfinding to go straight up or straight down. As I only allow it to Pathfind unoccupied voxels, i.e. air voxels, and they have to be on top of an occupied voxel, like a floor or obstacle with a collider. Therefore, it is impossible for them to go straight up, as I haven't implemented ladders yet, and there are no flying enemies either. Additionally, they cannot go straight down, as that would mean they have to go through a collider or the ground. Therefore, I can just strike those two alternatives from the moveset, and I've reduced the branching factor to 24. At least until I add the ability of using ladders, flying enemies, or enemies that can crawl along walls. But if I do that, I can add specific pathfinding extensions to them like a separate system or additional code being run exclusively for them. This is still quite a lot of cells to add every iteration, and therefore for the moment I'll be sticking with using a hash map and iterating over it linearly to find the cheapest node, as it's potentially just as fast while being simpler for my smooth brain. However, we have a problem. The performance is really good as I've managed to get the pathfinding time for this path down to 0.3 milliseconds, which is very good. But for large paths across long distances we have a problem. The path shown is only 56 cells long, which only took around 250 iterations to reach, as I'm using an overestimating heuristic that pushes it more in the target direction. But for large paths it can easily take thousands of iterations to find a successful path, which results in noticeable stutters when a new path is being calculated. Therefore, we need to split it across multiple frames. Fortunately, I managed to use a dynamic hash map extension by Turtle to store all the explored and unexplored cells for the pathfinding algorithm across multiple frames on each entity. Which means that we can now pause and resume the pathfinding across multiple frames, where it calculates one entity per thread limited to the number of threads. This means that for my PC, it can process paths for 24 different enemies in parallel, and if there are more than 24 enemies, it will process them once other enemies are done. As a benefit, this also means that having a lot of enemies pathfinding during a frame won't really affect the performance more than having one enemy. As you can see, with 178 cylinders pathfinding and running around, the game is still running at more than 100 FPS in editor. So, now we have good performance and we have a fully parallelized A-star pathfinding algorithm for enemies, where they can path around gaps in the ground, upstairs and ramps or around obstacles. But unfortunately there is still a pretty major issue. Enemies that are larger than one voxel. Since my enemies are at the moment humanoids, as the cars don't use the A-star pathfinding, they are larger than a single voxel larger than a cubic meter. To solve this I could just make the voxel grid larger so that each voxel is around the size of a human. 
but doing this would then stop small enemies, such as the bugs, from squeezing through gaps and showing more intelligent behavior. And if I wanted larger enemies than the humanoid raiders, then I would have to make the voxel grid even larger, and therefore this is not an option. Instead we want to keep using our base size of 1 meter voxels, and instead make the pathfinding use a variable unit size, where it calculates the larger unit size by sampling the base voxels. A voxel size of 2 would be 2x2x2 two by two by two voxels, and contain 8 base voxels. We then loop over these 8 base voxels to see if they are occupied or not, and just pretend that all voxels are this larger size by sampling the base world. And now we have a solution for multiple enemies of different sizes. Oh, and also, these enemies can pathfind over very long distances, so uh, you're not safe. But after spending more than a month on voxelization and pathfinding, it's finally done. Where I just have to make the AI smarter in terms of where it chooses to pathfind to, by implementing a cover system so that the enemies don't just run in front of the player and get shot, but try to flank and choose a spot where they are partially hidden. However, that is a task for another devlog. And again, the game is on Steam, so please go wishlist it, as I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around, and the next devlog should be about animations and enemies that are more than cylinders. <laughs>